Well, uh, good evening. I uh, I wanted to try to do some more videos. I kind of took a break because, well, just been watching everything that's happening, and I guess I've already talked about that, but. Uh, and leading up to the September 23rd thing that a bunch of Christians were making a big to-do over. Uh, I have to admit I didn't think anything was going to happen very significant on that day, on that day, because that's not the way the next level generally works, but I can't second guess the next level. Uh, um, in those regards, in that regard. Um, uh, if they wanted to do something, you know, do a big event on the same day that the Christians were saying it was going to happen, who am I to say what's, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not going to come up with a prediction of what they're going to do or not going to do. That's ridiculous. That's stupid. Except in, in uh, unless I can back it up with prophecy, and uh, even then, uh, it's got to be a maybe, and because I might not have the interpretation right, <clears throat> and uh, and they could change if they want to. You know, they don't have to stick to. Uh, and also, prophecy can mean a number of things. So, uh, so you know, coming up with specific days, you know, Jesus talked about that that no no man was going to know the the day and the hour of an event. And there's only one depiction in prophecy in Revelations chapter 9 that actually lists, states that something is going to happen on an hour and a day and a month and a year. And considering that it's saying all those different measurements in the same statement means that that will probably boil down to a certain uh, time of one day. <clears throat> um, but that doesn't mean we're going to know what day that is because uh, I don't know why the next level would, you know, give that information to anybody. And who could, who could actually count on it coming from the next level? I mean, uh, anyway, so that's, that just shows the power of the Luciferian space alien fallen angels. That they can get Christians to actually uh, um, break the rules. The, you know, I mean, change from what was taught. I mean, it's not unusual. Of course, that's what the religions are all based on, changing what was taught. Uh, they wouldn't exist if they didn't change what was taught, I don't think. <clears throat> uh, you know, that's why there's all this public prayer. You know, it, it's so uh, regimented now, uh, so uh, commonplace. There's nothing special about prayer when it comes to the public forum. Um, you know, people pass around prayers and people tell you they love you and, and then they, they make it into a chain mail or, uh, and it's not that that's a terrible thing, but it's, it's just uh, not the way things were meant. You know, uh, the word love, uh, of course, had, you know, like four or five different uh, meanings but now it's been boiled down to one. And so, you know, who can tell what that means? And, you know, uh, do we love somebody we don't know? Uh, you know, I don't think that's really possible um, in, in the sense of uh, being willing to uh, lay down our life for them. That's the greatest love, according to Jesus, that there is, is laying down your life for your neighbor, for your fellow human. Um, uh, I mean, to do that as being, as being a part of the military, 
uh, is a distortion of that because you're doing it, you know, using weapons, threatening somebody else, go, killing somebody else, and those are all against the next level's rules. So, uh, it's a very, very mixed up society we have, uh, not just the United States, European society, uh, but um, all the societies on Earth, I think, uh, it's safe to say, are all distortions of whatever they originated from, uh, um, uh, considering that each originated from uh, a combination of uh, next level uh, experiment and uh, the use of the Luciferian space alien fallen angels. <clears throat> and uh, you know, so I was thinking about the G7, you know, the global seven, those seven powers that are basically Christian powers, uh, the United States, Canada, England, France, um, Spain, Germany, which is also the, the Dutch, uh, and Italy. Now, the G7 actually includes Japan instead of Spain, but uh, how, how do we know that how would the next level know that those countries would all uh, become the global, basically the, the global power? I mean, they, I think they control like uh, over 50% of the GDP of the world, those seven countries. Actually, I have that right here somewhere. Let's see, the group of seven is a group consisting of Canada, France, Germany, Italy, Japan, United Kingdom, and the United States. These countries kind of represent more than 64% of the net global wealth, $263 trillion, and have the very high, and all have a very high human development index, of course, development on their terms. Of course, so we're talking about white people, mostly. Uh, that um, <clears throat> uh, in, in basically Christian white white people okay and so those are the heads of the beast and there are also countries that have all um, well, I don't, know, I don't know about Japan, and I can't really speak to Italy in this regard, but I think regarding uh, Canada, France, Germany, and the United States, uh, they have all had significant UFO experiences and crashes, uh, potentially, in their neck of the woods. Uh, uh, I don't know about all of them, but I mean, I know about England and um, United States. I think there was one in, uh, well, I'm not going to go there. I guess I'm, I may be wrong about that, you know, that, but they all communicate with each other anyway, and they're all working in cahoots with each other, and they were all global powers. In other words, they were, when they were just having ships, for the transportation, they were fl they were sailing all over uh, the planet as far as they knew, and that's what brought them to the Americas eventually. Um, and so uh, um, that's why they're considered the global seven and the heads of the beast. Um, and the, the beast, if I haven't said it before, um, indicates. Uh, um, those humans that are poison. So I'm saying yes, and maybe there's a word for it. I, I hope there's not. I don't really care if there's not or if there is or it isn't. But uh, the white Christian rich nations of the world are came about because they were under the control of 
Luciferian fallen angel space aliens. Uh, and Tiendo talked about how the space aliens were even in competition with one another. And had, had some and had relationships with different countries. Um, and so, how did the next level know that that was going to happen? Well, maybe there were seven uh, Luciferians that were the the primary ones that they knew were going to um, uh, become the global leaders. In, in those terms. <clears throat> and uh, it said in, in Revelations uh, 17, I think, or 18, that five will have fallen uh, um, and, I, uh, and one is and one is to come. And the one is to come, I think, was the United States. And the one is, at the time, would have been Rome, I believe. And the five that had fallen, you can actually trace back to the past. You know, you can see that in several ways. Um, and you can see that uh, it relates to the way that each of those empires fell over time and they had fallen in the past. Uh, related to the Babylonian uh, Empire and and the, and the Sumerian, which is, I think, basically the same thing as the Babylonian. But I'm not a historian. I'm not trying to be. So I could have a lot of this, some of this wrong. But in general, I think, uh, since I'm not trying to be that specific right this minute, um, uh, this is what the case is. And... And the reason I'm bringing this up is uh, because of I was going to try to tackle uh, Revelation chapter 13. And that starts with 13.1 um, that says, And I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. <clears throat> blasphemy uh, has to do with speaking evil of God. And uh, speaking evil of God would be uh, um, speaking about God as not existing, which nobody could possibly know that. That's impossible. <clears throat> and, uh, or uh, leading people, speaking evil of God is like leading people to disbelieve in God, to disbelieve in the true God, the true evolutionary level above human kingdom of God, kingdom in the heavens. And so you could be using those terms all you want, like the religious do. The religious do that in the Hindu religion. They talk about God. They use that term God even, which is really strange, isn't it? Because that's an English word, I think, uh, you know, that came from uh, the Greek uh, theos and uh, was... Uh, Elohim or Jehovah, primarily, in, uh, in Hebrew and Aramaic. So how, how the, Indian, the people in India actually talk about God, well, maybe they're uh, actually the people that were, I heard said, talking like that, well, maybe they're Muslim, most of them, which that's an Abraham religion, so that'd be related to the same Bible. Uh, and therefore, um, the same, the same shortcut terminology for what is a, actually a kingdom level of many members. Um, but then Tien Do said that there was the chief of chiefs, 
And so that would be the one that's God. Um, <clears throat> but that can be very confusing, of course, to people because um, well, it doesn't have to be confusing to people. But so I won't, I won't go past that. But so blasphemy actually comes from the word Greek word blasphemia and means railing or evil speaking, slandering, detracting from, speech that's injurious to, you know, injuring a member of the next level by talking bad about them. What you're injuring is the potential of a fellow human soul or spirit to actually um, become uh, a student and a prospective member of the next level and the kingdom of God. And so when you're messing with other people is what, uh, and their free will, I mean, you're not, in a sense, you're not messing with their free will because they're the ones that decide whether to pay attention to the people that are speaking injuriously to about God or about the next level. <clears throat> so you're not really influencing their free will. Well, you're influencing their free will, but you're not forcing the, their free will. You're free... You know, forcing, forcing them to choose to believe in what you're saying that's injurious speech against the next level. Impious is another way of saying it, and reproachful speech injurious to divine majesty, I'm reading, which I, I could have actually read over here, and then you could see the definitions better. Uh, if I went, if I use my use strongs, which I should do that instead. There you go. Uh, that's not giving as many definitions. Um, but let me uh, let me click on this guy. And you'll see more that it comes from blapto and theme. So against men. See, it's actually even talking about how it's a calamitous uh, speaking against humans, not just men as males. Or especially impious against God, blasphemous, railing. And you can even play it out further and say it's to hinder. You're trying to hinder somebody by trying to convince them that there is no level above human or that the level above human are just spirits floating around in the clouds or that all humans, or everything living is a part of uh, God in the sense that God is than the, con the, the consciousness, which it is, uh, of course, he, they are consciousness. They are um, the mind of the next level that occupies all the vehicles of each member of the next level. But each member of the next level, when they take in the mind from their older members, that becomes their mind then. Even though they don't think of it as their mind, they don't, they don't need to because they're not in competition with anybody to compare against. Uh, uh, they, they love the fact that it's their next level older member's mind that's occupying their mind, their soul pocket. That, may, that uh, by their choosing to to receive that mind is what made them into uh, that qualified them to become members of the next level and get the reward of eternal life you know uh, which of course belief in that is the beginning of it um, but belief actually was always taught to also have uh, action supported with it um, and thought, word, and deed, you know, uh, action. 
Those are all actions. Uh, and how much action we put into um, connecting with and abiding by and living by uh, the ways and behaviors of members of the next level, that's up to us. That's how we can all grow at different rates. And, uh, and we don't know who is growing faster or slower because we don't know what anybody else is up against or what they will be up against and how they will respond to what they're up against in the future. So, so nobody's got it made. There is no guarantee for anybody. That's why uh, we, we, if we want to stay uh, in good stead, which was the way that Tien Do used to use those terms, in good, in good stead, with our older members, then we're going to be always uh, seeking to improve because then we won't go backwards if we keep on seeking to improve. Or if we go backwards, there won't be a big step backwards that we can't recover from. Uh, even if we take a step backwards or many steps backwards, uh, uh, if we can get back into uh, belief again and asking our next level older member for help to move forward again in some way, uh, then we're back on track again. And, uh, and the next level is going to provide us each with ways of making leaps. But if we don't keep up with them, then leaps get harder to make and we can fall again. We can always fall again if we've fallen before or any time we can fall. Um, but if we ask for help when, we, when we're falling or after we fall, uh, then we get help. Now, this cannot be boiled down to time, I don't believe. Like, in other words, you know, uh, um, um, like I'm criticized uh, because I only came back to um, wanting to be of service to Tian Do uh, in the early 2000s. Um, yeah, that's pretty close, I think, you know, right around 2000. Uh, before I moved off of Long Island, New York, where I was at the time, uh, where I experienced the 9-11 attacks. But uh, I, I didn't experience them firsthand. I didn't see anything. I wasn't that close to the city. I was about 30 miles away at the time. Uh, but I was watching it live, and I knew a lot of people, and I knew firefighters, and I, I, I played music for benefits of the firefighters that died in, in, in Smithtown and other places, and I knew people working in the World Trade Center, and, uh, but they just didn't go to work that day, and all different kinds of things like that. Anyway, so it was close to me and my vehicle in many ways. <clears throat> but... Uh, but see, I only came back into talking about the next level publicly on a regular basis and re-watching videos and watching videos for the first time, many of them, the exit videos, uh, <clears throat> at that time, in around 2000. <clears throat> and while, uh, while Carlin at the time and Ricotti were, uh, you know, well, Ricotti, earlier than that, were, uh, you know, copying the tapes and I don't know how much, I don't know how, when Carlin actually engaged with Ricotti, I guess sometime after Ricotti, uh, Carlin left the group, uh, after he was in the group for a couple months, uh, which uh, I don't mean to find fault with him for only being in the group for a couple months, uh, it's just, that's, that was his experience and uh, how he's getting his lessons now. Um, and uh, it doesn't take away from him because there were some individuals in the group that were in, in the group from, for 25 years, 20, no, 
not 25 years, but uh, 20 years or 18 or 19, like myself, uh, that uh, in 17 years that f fell away and uh, didn't recover, didn't come back to um, believing in and wanting to work for T and Doe. So, so the, the time frame is kind of irrelevant. Uh, and, and some of those individuals from 1994 seemed like they had had all the human lessons or, or equivalent human lessons that the ones in the classroom had that were there from 1975. Uh, so, so the ones that were in the first fruit harvest, uh, which the ones in 1994 were part of, uh, could have been older souls, you know, if you want to put it that way. I don't really like to use it that way because it's not just about age. Age doesn't necessarily relate directly to growth. Because, you know, so... I guess I could say greater souls. Um, because they had become more uh, filled with next level of mind. That would make them greater souls. I think that's fair to say. And they would also be bigger souls. I think because there's a relationship, well, bigger can be in terms of density of the soul as well. I, I don't know if all souls are the same size or not. But Doe did say that a soul extends outside the body. Um, anyway, but, so, so, I, so, I, so Carlin criticized me uh, recently, again, um, because while he was working with Ricotti, uh, mailing discs to people and, and uh, whatever else they were doing, uh, um, I was having a baby with my partner and, uh, and working a full-time job, computer programming. And, and uh, and playing music at night, trying to you know get back into the the music streams uh, for whatever reasons, for fun or you know because whatever uh, it's just something I could do, and so I wanted to do it uh, to boost my ego, whatever it was for, you know, and uh, and so but but why does that matter? You know, when I came back into talking about it, uh, the, the bottom line is that I did. Thank God. Thank Tian Do that I did. And that doesn't mean I haven't made at this point either. Um, like I already said. But, uh, but why, you know... What, I know I throw around the 19 years that I have, I throw that around a lot when I talk to people. And maybe that's a fault of mine. I don't know. I, I know it has weight in a lot of people's minds, but if that weight actually makes them listen more to uh, what I say, and what I'm saying is pointing them towards T and Do, then why, why, why would we be so wrong about that? What's so bad about that? It's like using music. It's like if I can play a song with music and somebody likes it and comes to it and then, and then reads my lyrics or hears my lyrics or, or, uh, um, or pays attention to something I'm saying wherever I'm putting that music, you know, like in a video like I did early on, I made some videos which just had text on the screen, on my YouTube channel, the very first ones I did, and I put music to it, and the, most of the music was music that, I think all of it was music that I participated in or I made myself, by myself. And, uh, and, and Carlin criticized me that for that as well. Um, and I don't know why. You know, because, uh, because people gravitate towards, towards me because of that. Um, well, you know what, if you look at my Facebook page and how many friends I have, and if you look at uh, my YouTube channel and see how many hits I get on my, on my videos combined, if you look at them, it's probably a few thousand. 
over uh, 15 years uh, of uh, close to that of a YouTube channel and uh, and and my blog. How many people actually follow that blog? And what are that like five or six people? I mean, you know, more people get it. You know, look at some of the headlines and stuff, but very few people comment. It's like I'm not getting any popularity out of this, even though even the media that I'm doing, I don't get popularity out of it. It's not anyway. Even the, if I do get popularity, it's not the popularity that anybody would want. That wants a human life. It's not human popularity. I mean, a little tiny bit of it might be. You know, I mean, once in a while somebody tells me they love me. You know, and they and they want to make love to me. You know, and it's like like I'm really going to go for that. Uh, I, I could care less about that, um, even though I haven't overcome my sex, my sexual, the vehicle's sex, desire for sexuality. Uh, I, I, so far, uh, uh, maybe the next level has helped me uh, not sink into another relationship or any, any kind of uh, even one night stand or anything regarding sexuality with somebody else. So. So, you know, I'm, thank, I'm thankful for that because um, I don't know that I could do it if the next level wasn't helping me because I'm kind of weak in that regard. Well, I shouldn't say that because I'm setting myself up to be weak. I should say that I'm strong in that regard. Um, but I'm not going to say I'm so strong in that regard that I, I can't be tempted. I'm not stupid to think that. Because I, I was kind of stupid like that when I started asking T for, you know, to give me lessons that so I can do a task I don't had. That was stupid. I don't know if stupid is the right word for it. Um, but uh, it's not like Doe has never used the word stupid, even though I think he didn't really approve of that word much. But uh, maybe in this context he would approve of it. Um, considering I'm calling myself stupid, I'm not calling somebody else stupid. But, uh, so, I know I talk with, you know, like I know everything, you know. Uh, you know, someone asks me a question, and I give them an answer, and, and I say, Tindo said this, and Tindo said that. I'm not always, I'm often not actually quoting exactly and showing them where the reference is to that quote. Um, uh, but sometimes I do. Uh, I try to point people to where they can hear those quotes. And um, I'm trying to get better like in that regard. But I guess I'm defending myself from some of Carlin's uh, and other people have actually taken that same position. Uh, two or three others actually uh, jumped on that bandwagon of, you know, let's, like what they say, you know, that, that saying that if you can't, if you can't address the message, then uh, attack the messenger. And what is the message that I'm talking about? Uh, that, well, it's T and Do's message but includes the Jesus message that Tien Do said they were um, reaffirming and bringing updates to and fulfilling of prophecy. They said that, that was the first three things that they, they awakened to primarily were that they had come, both come from outer space the level above human, the kingdom of heaven, the same place that Jesus had come from, and that they were here to bring updates to the Bible, and uh, and they were here to fulfill prophecy. And the prophecy they were here to fulfill, that they learned about some months later in Gold Beach, Oregon, was the two witnesses prophecy. But did that mean that that's the only prophecy they were supposed to fulfill? Why would we put that limitation on them? They're fulfilling all the prophecies. And all, with a capital A-L, 
I'm talking about all the prophecies that stem from Jesus. So the entire book of Revelations, although that doesn't mean I can count on every word in that book of Revelations, meaning what the, the humans translated it to mean. I can't, you can't count on that. Because even in the four Gospels, you can't count on that. That's why Doe ended up getting the Amplified Version. And he also brought, bought us a Strong's Concordance. And encouraged those that wanted to. And that ended up being Lagodi, Sirodi, myself, Sunodi, and uh, maybe some others. Uh, um... that had the time, because most of us had out of craft tasks, and so we didn't have quite the heavy schedule that some of the in-crafters had, especially when some of the in-crafters were overseers and, and uh, you know, whatever, it doesn't matter what, why some of them gravi gravitated towards the, uh, uh, the revelations and the, and the meanings of the Jesus words and the Jesus scriptures and who didn't and who didn't you know, who didn't who didn't doesn't make a hill of beans a difference uh, it was just uh, some did and I was one of them so uh, you know Doe didn't say that um, you're getting any more points in your crown uh, by writing about scripture or you know being a writer or any of those things, because I was a writer also in the group. Because Doe said that we could, anybody could be a writer. It's not like I was a writer like in the human kingdom where you're a writer and now you've got this label that people look up to as somebody that knows how to write. I'm not one of those. I don't, I don't know how to do a good job writing in the human kingdom. I don't even know that I do a good job writing about the next level. I don't think I do. I kind of dislike pretty much a lot of what I, what I write. I mean, I could feel like it can be improved. I don't dislike it entirely because I think it can be improved. But enough about talking about me anyway. The, uh, but I'm going to get attacked a lot more um, because there's two documentaries coming out. Um, one is a 10-part series that's a podcast. So it's going to be like 10 hours of uh, talking in depth uh, that uh, actually the individual that came to where I lived uh, to interview me, and I also went to Brooklyn to interview with, well, not... I didn't interview with him, was actually Glenn Washington. And people know Glenn Washington from uh, um, Snap Judgment. I think that's an NPR uh, radio broadcast, podcast. And I always enjoyed Snap Judgment. I think it only airs on, well, it depends on what radio you're listening to, but so I, I don't know, I guess it airs whenever people want to air it, but uh, <clears throat> I would hear it on Sundays a lot of times, I think. But uh, so, so he's the, the, going to be the host of this podcast, uh, but I also interviewed with another person in that group. Uh, who I saw some articles about recently, um, about the whole effort. And, uh, and the other group, uh, I'm not, I still don't want to say who it was, maybe I've said it already, but it's, it's a national media uh, syndication uh, that uh, is doing a, a 50 minute documentary, I guess a TV documentary of course. Um, and I don't really expect anything much of new from them, uh, but you never can tell. They might use the last thing I gave them, which was a plug of my book and accentuating 
the fact that T and O were the Father and Jesus returned, uh, not in Jesus' body, because Jesus, Jesus was the name of the body, even though the older member was the same older member as was named Doe in the body that was Marshall Applewhite, uh, took that Jesus body and converted it into, uh, transformed it, metamorphosized it into a next level vehicle. So Jesus is a member of the next level. Okay? But it's the body that that member of the next level took. And uh, Doe said when he came, he put that body in a closet. Or his next level body in the closet. I must. I don't know if it was that same body or not. But uh, he put it in a closet, and I don't. Uh, so I guess it might be in the same closet with uh, the Moses body and the Elijah body, and maybe the Enoch body, if they if they needed all those bodies for anything. Uh, I guess they might have brought them back to show to. Uh, the disciples on that Transfiguration Mountain so that they would uh, see individuals that looked the way that uh, they would have thought them they were they had in their programming from their past experiences and even genetically they could remember as being uh, Moses and Elijah. So so the next level can do that. I mean, humans can almost do that to some degree. They can, they can freeze sperm and eggs and, and then use them later. So the next level, you know, and they, they talked about cryogenics, I think it's called, where you're freezing somebody. That, I think there's even some big movie stars or big rich people that have uh, paid to have their bodies frozen, uh, thinking that when they will be revived, uh, medical science might have caught up to being able to cure whatever their ailment was that was going to cause them to die. So I don't know if that's possible or not, but certainly if anybody knows how to do it, it's the next level that knows how to do it. So to think that it's not possible is trying to limit the next level along with everything else. Thinking that we're, we can have more insights to the next level because we think we can determine what, what they can or can't do. So, so back to this verse here, and I stood upon the sand of the sea. Now the sand of the sea I want to go over here, talk about that. Uh, that's not exactly what I wanted to go to. I have to talk about all this Los Angeles stuff. Um, well, there was a verse in Isaiah that talked about the sand of the sea as being uh, human beings. So I'm not going to go through it any further than that. You can search on sand. Not even that phrase, I think, was in there. Uh, I don't do a very good job queuing these up. Uh, Daniel 7 5. Oh, uh, anyway, um, let me go back to where I was over there by the verse. So, sand of the sea is an expression talking about uh, the humans in the sea of humanity. 
Um, and it's also related to the salt, or howls, for, for a sea is from the word salt. So we're talking about the salt of the earth at the same time they're talking about. So he stood upon the salt of the earth, the sand salt of the earth. There's many of them. Uh, and I don't know, I don't know what that's limited to. Uh, it could be the, uh, it could be millions for all I know. It could be billions, for all I know. Um, but from those will come the vehicles that the next level can use to bring their, their students back to have their last overcoming experience, their final overcoming experience, and uh, to graduate the human kingdom. And, uh, and then also uh, secondarily, or lastly, as opposed to firstly, uh, all those individuals that come in the second wave, which started in 1994, or 1992, or 3, or 4, 5, and 6, and 7. That was all the start, seven years of uh, the first phase um, which is the first seal opening. And then there were seven years after that, and seven years after that, and it, all, and it ends up being seven times seven, which is the 49, which I think is part of Daniel's prophecy at one point. Anyway, so, so, so now saying I stood, this is now John saying this, okay? John stood. Because I is actually the word used there. Oh, no, it isn't. But it is John talking through this. So John is saying that he's standing. And that means that he's taking a human vehicle. And standing up for his older members. It doesn't mean it's me. It's anybody. I mean, he's being re representative of... Uh, those students that are standing on the sand in the sea, however many there are, which uh, and what he saw was saw is with the eyes. This comes from optimana optimana eye. I'm not sure how to say that. Uh, it's a verb to see, to perceive, see, be sure, tell, understand, wish. Okay, behold is actually a way that it's, I believe it's first, oh, translated this way a lot of times instead of saw. Uh, stand before. Well, I, I say properly is to see. I should have said that right away, figuratively or, or literally, or both. And what he's seeing is the beast, and that's again the dangerous animal, the poisonous animal, the wild animal, the, the animal that entraps. And that's what humans are. Humans are mammals. And uh, sp the space aliens are what Tian Do called uh, um, human equivalents, was their, was their term for the space aliens. There are no good space aliens and bad space aliens. They're all human equivalents. Uh, the only ones that are good that are from outer space are uh, the next level memberships. Um, and good also relates to uh, being functional in a real way, 
Well, Tiendo said, when you become a member of the next level, you're an individual for the first time. We're not individuals now. Why? Because we have a lot of influences around us and in us to think differently, to act differently, to, uh, well, that's it, to think and act differently than the next level would choose for us to think and act. which they know we have to come by um, in stages, in degrees, with spurts, uh, in a, in a, in a, take a step forward, take a step back, take a, two steps forward, take a step back, take two steps back, take a step forward, take three steps back, take a step forward, take two steps forward. You know, with some patterns like that. Uh, that's, that is actually, uh, Tiendo even compared that to the way spacecrafts, sometimes we used to watch them at night when we lived outdoors and even when we lived indoors, we had night watch at times in Colorado and, and some other crafts we had. And, uh, and so we would go out and, and uh, but when we were out in Wyoming or in, in the woods in Texas, in the Wyoming wilderness, you know, uh, in the middle of nowhere, with no facilities. Uh, then when you saw the stars, especially at those high altitudes in Wyoming, uh, you know, you could see a lot more. And, and we had a log, and we kept track of the lights that we saw. And we, we, could, we learned to identify the same light coming over the head, the same altitude, uh, um, almost every night. Uh, the same time and we realized that those were satellites and then and then we would see shooting stars that like even had a little smoke associated with them like you would see like a puff of smoke and a little like like a uh, you know, little fiery tail and so you knew that was likely uh, some kind of a meteor but then you saw these streaks that were even faster than meteors that just and they left a long streak of light and went right by you and there were a lot of those sometimes and they would go in different directions and uh but they weren't going down they were like you know parallel with the earth and they looked like they were far away uh now i guess those could have been meteors also but um some of them seem to have different speeds as well, and some of them, um, is, so we, we thought some of them were probably next level crafts, but, or, or remote control next level crafts, for all we know, or, you know, or piloted next level crafts. We, don't, we didn't try to really guess about that. I'm just guessing about it now to round out the, the discussion a little bit. But uh, uh, so you know, and and this also gives me you know lets me lets people know what I don't think Tiendo talked about um, because this is not that important this kind of material although it's interesting you know, it was always fun when Tiendo talked about things like this. Of course, and so that so it's good for us to to have these thoughts from them, related to them, and related to everything that happens. There's nothing wrong with that, wanting that, and and uh, Doe did want uh, people to have the uh, the ability to learn more in depth about them. And the only place I saw that written was in the letters, in one of the letters that was sent to Mark and Sarah in 1997 after they left their vehicles, after uh, the 39 left their vehicles. Um, so, so that's, that's to be found, a lot of that is to be found in the audio tapes. And I do wish, you know, Carlin keeps on bringing up that 
uh, I don't think it's important to have all the audio tapes. And uh, I mean, uh, it, 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 to me, it is important to have them all, but it's it's not so important that I'm gonna lose sleep over it or try to figure out some way to steal them from Mark and Sarah or, or threaten them in some way with a lawsuit or something uh, in order to force them to provide them. If people want to do that, you know, do what people want to do. But, uh, but I consider that the fact that Ricotti uh, um, went to the storage locker and got those tapes and then ch chose to copy all the ones that T was on um, and then make them into a CD, digitize them and send and then the, the rest of the masters he sent back to Mark because he knew that in the letters, it stated clearly, which I agree with, and I wrote about it in my blog, uh, said that Mark and Sarah were to be the ones to decide how to distribute those materials that were in the storage locker, the materials that were of value, the things that were of value. It was their job to, to distribute among those that wanted to do this project, which they haven't done that. And so uh, and I've, I've tried to appeal to them to do that four or five times some years ago. And it got to a point to where I, I trust that if Doe wanted us to have all the tapes and didn't want to give uh, Mark and Sarah the choice of fulfilling that task 100% because as long as they have those tapes they could still change and start providing those tapes to people and then they would have recovered what they're losing by not fulfilling what T and those wishes were which was to have all those tapes available I think that's very plain to see from the letters and from other things that were even said in the tapes uh, that Tien Do wanted everybody to have the option to that. But that's no reason for us to get all angry with them about. Uh, well, maybe not anger is not the right word, because that's like being angry with them with a cause to be angry. And the cause is a just cause. That then they're withholding information from Tien Do that, that was meant for people to have access to. So I think it's proper to be angry with them. Uh, but it still wouldn't justify um, doing anything uh, to them that was against the behavior and ways of the next level. That would be a wrong application of anger. Uh, I think the, the only real application of Anger, well, I shouldn't say the only because then I'm be limiting the next level for the ideas that they might give us. But uh, I think it would have to be legal. I think that you know, if you couldn't appeal to them by just asking them, which I, I, you know, I, I, I say to everybody, uh, yeah, ask them to have them. And uh, you, you can swear that you'll never share it with, with Soyote or Sawyer, whatever they think of my own name they think of me as. And don't share it with me uh, if you want to stick to that. Um, though I don't think T and Doe would find fault with you if you didn't stick to that. But to tell a little white lie like that, if it gets them to give it to you, I don't know that, that Tien Do would think that was wrong. Uh, but I can't do it. Uh, they, unless I pose as somebody else, which I guess I could do that like anybody else could. Um, I don't know. That's a big mess, you know. Uh, but it's not such a big mess 
that it's keeping anybody from growing towards the next level with full throttle. Nobody's going to be shorted in becoming a member of the next level because Mark and Sarah aren't releasing those tapes. That's guaranteed. Because if Tiendo thought that we were going to be shorted by not having those tapes, they would have saw to it that Mark and Sarah did not have total control over those. They would have had Rick Cody copy all the tapes and then give back the masters. Then they could still distribute those tapes and we could still have them all. So, so that's why criticizing me for not taking a harder stand all these years um, I, I find to be an unfounded criticism. I mean, some of the things Carlin has brought up I think are founded. Um, but not that one. Although, all his criticisms are of value to me, even though I'm tired of hearing them over and over again. And I, I keep on responding to them because uh, um, because even though he may be copying and pasting sometimes, I don't think so at this point. I think I think he's got it all in his head. You know, he's just playing the tape and then writing it down and and sending it to me. I don't know if you're whoever's listening to this is familiar with it, but I just I just posted on my blog a document that showed that took apart all his criticisms and then responded to each one. So now next time he sends me a criticism, instead of rewriting it all again. I'll add to any new criticisms to that document and then I'll send people the link. I'll put it in the comments sections or wherever that criticism is on YouTube or, or on the blog or on Facebook, wherever it is, uh, the link to that blog post so then they can see my responses to it if they want to. If they don't want to and they just want to believe what he says, then fine. You know, I, uh, that's no, uh, it's just, you know, water off a duck's back, as far as I'm concerned. But, uh, but I, it's you know, at this point, it is water off a duck's back because it, you know it's frustrating that it keeps on happening, but it doesn't really uh, affect me personally that much anymore. It did for a while. Um, so it's interesting that I'm talking all about this uh, because in chapter 13 it talks about how it seems like uh, um, the students from the next level that are left behind in the context of Revelation chapter 13, which is the next verse, is going to talk about a little more. Uh, would indicate that it's talking about us, the, the remaining, the remaining ones, the remnant, the individuals that uh, remain in the human kingdom after the first fruit graduated. And that also would apply to all the souls that we're getting into vehicles now and starting from when they left. So starting from the second seal and the third seal and now we're in the fourth seal opening, which are also affirmation periods of time when individuals, humans like you and I, uh, who were given a soul deposit or some kind of a tag or some kind of a deposit for returning souls to come back in, into to resume their next lesson step because there were certainly more students uh, 
throughout the Moses camp and then throughout the Jesus camp after Jesus left uh, then uh, 39. But they're like grades in school. And so these, these ten heads are those ten nations that make up uh, the heads of the beast. They're the ones that run the show. And it's interesting that head, I think, relates to hair. Or maybe it's horn that relates to hair. Yeah, that's right. It's horn that relates. But head relates to seizing. In the sense of seizing. And what do those, what do those nations do? What have they done throughout history? Seized other people's property. Seized other people's resources. Seized other people's people. You know, the slave trade. Right? Uh... They stole them, uh, seized other people's money, uh, seized their lives by warring with them and killing them, and, uh, seized their livelihoods by uh, knocking them out of their businesses. Like for instance, like for instance, I, I know of a, a few like uh, Ty, like Tyson Chicken, I believe. Uh, they went into Haiti, and they they sold their chicken dirt cheap, below what the, the Haitians could raise chickens and sell it for. And so they wiped out a whole bunch of people from their businesses, and then they raised their prices. And so now everybody was. Uh, you know, maybe they didn't raise their prices much, but whatever they did, they, they according to the reports I heard uh, through Democracy Now! and you know, Amy Goodman's radio broadcast, which I haven't listened to in, many, in a number of years, because I don't keep those kind of hours anymore in the mornings. Um, and, you know, and anyway, but... Uh, I mean, so that's a, that's a way of seizing somebody else's economy, and that happened in Mexico as well, with uh, the garment industry that went down there and then set up factories, and then basically, uh, you know, started employing people in those factories or in the factories right over the border, uh, and so that the people that were making, you know products couldn't compete again with with the factory orders you know that because they were put in the garment industry uh, they were making clothes and so those factories were uh, potentially selling their clothes in the same areas where they were in Mexico where they didn't have to pay US taxes through the NAFTA agreement those trade agreements are basically uh, robbing people blind from other nations. But the rich in those countries get richer. And so they love them. So that's what head means. They're the head of that. And they're fire breathing. Because this is also... The dragon is also described as um, being at the head of the beast, being the mouthpiece of the beast. And that's because the dragon is actually Lucifer. And the space aliens, the Luciferians, are the dragon. There's more than one of them. And they're angels of the horns. The Luciferian angels are the horns. Because horn is related to hair. So it's like, and the, the horn is uh, also the, uh, um, the horn is what does the sounding, whether it's the military. You know, they blew a horn before the walls of Jericho fell down. 
the Lord said, you're going to blow seven, you're going to blow seven times and then the walls were going to fall. Well, the next level will probably stimulate an earthquake. Or I, or I, or I had some way of uh, sending a lay, you know, some, some, some sound to accentuate it to actually, you know, bring those rocks down. Who knows how they did it? Or helped it happen? But, uh, but the horn was also a way of uh, um, making an announcement. And so that's also the media, the ten horns. But the ten relates to what's behind the horns, what's behind the military, what's behind the military, and what's behind it all is money. That's what buys military people. That's what buys the people that are in the media to do their jobs. And who runs the, who runs the financials? Well, the crowns, the kings. The kings of those countries, those, those heads. And I think those those seven countries all had a king at one time. Even the United States, before it was the United States, when it was the colonies, had the King of England as their head. Of course, I think all the countries had kings. Um, one time, so that doesn't really apply, but it, it's saying that the crowns are ten individuals. They, otherwise, they would have just said there's ten horns with, you know, uh, horns with crowns. They could have said it that way, but no, they repeated it. It said there's ten horns, and upon these horns, upon these militaries, upon these uh, governmental forces, there are ten leaders. And those crowns can change, of course. And upon it, those heads, the name or the word is actually a name, literally or figuratively, but it also is an authority. The heads, the authority of blasphemy, the character of blasphemy, the, 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 the authority that there is no God, or that God is a nebulousness spiritual God, a cosmic consciousness, well, you know, what Buddhism has become, right, which Buddhism originally had a belief in God. Uh, I think you can actually find uh, where it talks about uh, God as people, but I can't actually quote where that is, whether it's the Upanishads or um, or if it goes back to the Bhagavad Gita that Buddhism came out of, I understand, um, which is also seems to be related to the same mythology in Roman and Greek mythology, which is a mixture of uh, uh, the next level and the space aliens, who were the fallen next level members. Well, fallen next level student members. Because they were never a full adult next level members. All right, well, at this point, I'm going to, I just realized that. I should just take it one verse at a time, because there's so much to say about every verse anyway. And uh, this way I can have, a, uh, I can concentrate more on each word and show related things to it. And so I'm going to uh, close this little session uh, on that note. So good night.